In today's video, we're changing the oil and oil filter on my car here. I'm going to show you the full process so you can save some cash and give it a go yourself. Hey there, chubs. Whoa, 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 whoa. What the f are you doing? You can't put that oil in there. You need to put engine oil in. And have you got a filter? No, no, I mean an oil filter. Okay, right. You need to watch this video as well. How's it going? I'm Kev and this is North Coast Workshop. Today what we're doing is changing the oil and filter in my Seat Leon. So what you can do is take it to the garage, you can pay them to do it for you, but if you want to save some cash and you've got some basic tools in the garage, you should give it a go yourself. So in this, I'll do a step-by-step -step process of how to change the oil in your car and the filter as well. Now, although my engine in my car is a two liter TFSI engine, it's common to Volkswagen Audi Group cars, most of the steps in this process will apply to your car as well. The slight variations in the type of oil the car needs, the amount of oil it needs, and also the location of the oil filter and how you remove it. But apart from that, the main key steps in this process will be the same. So anyway, let's get started. So first off, what you need is of course your engine oil. I've gone today for 5W40 Quantum engine oil. This is well recommended for my car, as well as Miller's do a good one as well. There's a lot of debate about the 5W30 being a better engine oil for these cars, but I'm not gonna get into that debate myself today. Just this is the oil I'm gonna use. It's up to yourself. If you wanna do some research beforehand, then gladly go ahead, but today this is what I'm using. Then up next, we've got the oil filter itself. So I've gone for a Bosch oil filter. That's the part number there. And the engine flush I've gone for is Wins. Every engine flush is different the instructions so please read the back of the instructions this one just says to be used on idle so tick over so the car doesn't get driven with it in the engine oil because the last thing you want to do is be driving the car with one that says to only have it on idle because that can be causing damage to your engine then obviously we've got the funnel to save you pouring engine oil over your engine bay you have your gloves to keep your hands clean some blue roll or kitchen roll or rag just to keep any areas clean and mop up any spillages you have your large 36mm socket to remove the oil filter housing and you have a ratchet, an extension and a 19mm socket for the sump plug and also a torque wrench to put the sump plug back in at the correct torque settings. Now there should also be a sump plug washer here as well but I forgot to order it so I'm going to do the wrong thing here and reuse the old one but I do recommend you get a new replacement sump plug and the washer if you can. Oh, and not forgetting as well, you'll need your bucket. This actually has old engine oil still in it. I need to empty that as soon as possible. And I use a bit of cardboard just to stop any engine oil going on the concrete or on the carpet when working under the engine. Right, so first up what I do is I start the engine and get it up to operating temperature. This means the engine oil is runnier because it's a lot warmer now and it means that it'll empty out of the engine a lot better as well. So you'll get a lot more engine oil out of the engine if it is a lot warmer. Now you can empty it like this, or what you can do is add an engine flush of some form. I've used this Wins engine oil flush, and this is to be left in the engine at idle for 20 minutes. And I use engine flush on every oil change, just to make sure it helps remove all the sludge, gunk, and oily deposits that are stuck inside the engine. What we'll do now is we'll bring the car inside the garage, we'll jack it up, and we'll drain this oil. And don't forget when jacking up the car, make sure you support it with axle stands. I've got three points of contact here, two axle stands and the jack. Safety first. Right now that the car is jacked up and supported properly, we're going to lift the bonnet. And to make sure the oil drains out properly, we're going to take off the oil cap. This will help release the pressure in the system. And also remove the dipstick as well to release pressure. And during this time, is also a good time to check your dipstick for any cracks around the handle or the base here and also make sure that the seal is intact, which my one is. Now we'll grab our cardboard, pop our cardboard under the sump and our bucket. It's sometimes hard to know where to position the bucket. It will come out a bit of force, so there should be adequate. So with my gloves on now, I'm going to take off the sump plug. I've just realised my sump plug is an aftermarket one. I think it's magnetic and it uses a 14 mil. So the size of the sump plug might need a different socket depending on your engine. Just going to move the bucket, move the bucket out of the way first, just to get 
it loosened a little bit. Now you want to try and not lose the socket or the sump plug or the washer in the bucket of oil. So try to take it out carefully. And do watch your hands because it is still very hot, this oil. There we go. So while that's draining, what you can do is obviously clean up your sump plug and socket extension like I have made a mess of here. And the best thing to do now is to let this drain basically until it stops running out of the sump. This could take a wee while, so maybe give it 10-15 minutes or so. So as the engine oil is draining, we'll just take off this sump plug up to the worktop here and do a quick inspection. Now this is a magnetic sump plug, so on the end is a magnet and it's meant to attract tiny microscopic metal filings in the engine oil and basically stick it to the end of the sump plug and stop it from circulating in the engine oil around the engine. There is actually some stuff right on the end of it there. So has anyone had experiences with these sump plugs? Do you use them yourself or do you think they're a waste of time? Like leave a comment down below in the comment section. Personally, first time I've used this one and the first time I've seen the results after one oil change and I personally think it's, it's obviously helped in some ways. It stopped that oil from containing these tiny microscopic metal filings and that getting worked into the engine until the oil was changed. So instead it's been stuck to the end of the sump plug and yeah, I would say that's a good thing. So yeah, leave your comment down below to see what you think. Now what we're going to do is remove the oil from the filter housing before we actually take the filter housing off to change the filter. So first of all, unscrew this cap here. Took it out of the way just now. Now Volkswagen Audi Group cars all contain this valve system to drain the oil out. I imagine what they do in the dealership is they put a hose onto the end of it or some sort of fitting and they drain the oil out that way. But the way I'm going to do this is a bit rougher instead. I'm going to push the valve in with a screwdriver and that should let oil out of the filter housing. I'll need to drain this into a bucket so what I'll do is put the sump plug back into the now empty sump, tighten up a little bit and use the bucket from there to put the oil in from this filter housing. A few moments later so with my long screwdriver here, what I'm going to do is just push this brown plastic bit in and it should let the oil out. Just watch out for oil coming down the screwdriver at the same time. You know what I've done here is I've pushed it off to a slight angle and it's kept the valve open and the oil runs out itself. So that's maybe a better way of doing it rather than what I did there, covering my screwdriver and myself in oil. And the same that applies to the sump plug. Just leave this as it is just now for as long as you can so that it's mostly emptied. So now that the oil has pretty much stopped coming out of the filter housing, what we're going to do is push that valve so it returns to its position, so it's sealed off, which is there. Give that a quick wipe. And we're going to get the 36mm socket onto the housing and loosen it and take it off. I'll leave the bucket in position because there might still be oil that comes out of the housing as you take it off, so just be careful. And there you go, that's the housing off. So up here on the worktop, we've got the filter housing and the oil filter is inside. So we're gonna take this filter out, put the new one in, and also replace the seal as well, this rubber seal. Before we put the new filter in place, what we'll do is we'll pull this seal out of here and pull it out. Go in with the old filter. So for the new seal, it just make sure the tab is facing up before you put it in and also it just needs quickly greased up with some engine oil. Ideally it's brand new engine oil but I'm just going to use some of the leftover oil at the bottom of this filter housing and just give it a quick coat. And then just pop it inside the groove where it came, the old one came from, push it down firmly, then pop the new filter on, give it a positive click and that's it. That's ready to go back on the car. Oh, I forgot to say as well, before you put this back on, just make sure you fill it with engine oil about, say, maybe halfway up, just so that there's no air lock inside the filter housing when you put it back on the engine. So I've just used some of the engine oil and poured it a bit into the top here. Don't fill it to right to the neck because once you put this back on, it's got to sit at a slight angle and that means all the oil will start to run out the side. So halfway, three quarters away, but not to the top. By hand, first 
push it up and start to tighten it. So once you get the felt housing as tight as you can by hand, this felt housing gets torqued up to 25 newton meters. Give everything a quick wipe down around the housing that might have got oil on it. Just replace the cap that goes over the end of it. And that is the housing done. So now we're going to remove our bucket out the way and then any rags out the way. So currently this sump plug is just in finger tight. So I'm just going to quickly again clean around the area. I forgot to say when you put the sump plug back in finger tight, just make sure the face of the sump itself and the washer is nice and clean and there's no bits of grit or dirt because otherwise it will make a nice tight seal against the sump when you tighten the sump plug. The torque settings for these can vary depending on the size of sump plug. So I'll put on the screen just now the sump plug sizes and their torque settings accordingly. But this one for me here is going to 30 newton meters. And that should be us now for doing any work on the underside of the engine. All we'll be doing later on maybe is checking this to make sure there's no leaks from either the sump plug or from the oil filter housing as well. So before putting engine oil inside the engine, my engine holds 4.6 litres. So I aim to put in about four litres or just under four litres, run it for a bit and then check the levels. I don't want to put in the full capacity straight away because there is still engine oil left in the engine in the internals and also added some to the oil filter housing as well. So just Google your engine online if you're not too sure of the capacity and look to aim to add maybe 10% less of that total amount. Just give the oil cap a quick clean. So like I said, what we'll do now is we'll pop the car outside so we're not going to gas ourselves in the garage running the engine. Run it for maybe 5-10 minutes or so. Turn it off, let it sit for another 5 minutes and we'll check the level on the dipstick. So the joys of living in the north of Scotland in the winter is we have very little daylight. So by the time I finished the job, it had gone pretty dark and I couldn't film outside to show you the level of dipstick. But I did take a picture to show you that I had it in between the minimum and maximum levels. Like I said, run the engine with new oil inside it for about 10 minutes or so, get it nice and warm, then let it sit for 2 or 3 minutes before you check the levels that may appear a lot lower levels than it actually is. You want to add a little bit each time to get it up to the correct level, because if you add too much oil, then you'll get serious issues with your engine. It'll start to smoke and it may cause it to actually fail altogether. Oh, and I forgot as well, make sure you reset the service interval indicator as well. Now on the Mark II Leon, I can do it quite easily by doing it through the menu on the dashboard here. You might have to do it through an OBD reader, through the OBD port, or you might have to take it to a garage and get them to reset it for you. Either way, just make sure you reset it so you do the oil change at the correct time next year or after a certain number of miles. So that's the car back outside now on the drive, new oil, new filter, all changed, good for another year, 10,000 miles or so. Anyway, I was going to say, before I put the under tray back on my car, I tend to leave it off for a couple of days, although I haven't had the tray back on for about two years now as it's in a mate's garage, but I will get it back at some point. Anyway, what I was going to say, don't put your tray back on, maybe for two or three days, just to see if there's any oil leaks. Even if you've tightened everything up as best you can, there might be a very small chance you might get a wee oil leak. So at least with the tray off, you can see it whether it's on your garage floor, or if it's parked in your drive overnight, you'll see it on your drive. You get some under trays as well that have this kind of foam insulation stuck to it as well, and they're really bad for obviously soaking up oil like a sponge, and then you'll never see the oil leak for maybe four, five, six weeks once it's fully saturated and it starts to trickle off to the sides. Like I said, if you can leave the tray off for maybe two, three days, and then peace of mind that you've got no oil leaks at all, and then put the tray back on. So if you found the video useful, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. Maybe this will give you incentive to try an oil change on your own car at some point. And if you want to learn how to change other service items on your car, then click this playlist up here for my service playlist. And down below that is a video that YouTube thinks you might enjoy as well. So I'll catch you next time. Cheers.